Okay, in this video, I'm going to be going through how to use the grid technique. Um, so, the grid technique was something that I discovered a few years ago when I was uh, learning how to do portrait painting. And coincidentally, one of the most important things um, to, to master before you even get into the painting aspect is to make sure that you can have a decent drawing down because if you're trying to get a likeness or get that photo to look like the uh, person you're trying to, to paint or even draw, um, one of the most important things is to make sure that your drawing is accurate. That way, when you go in with your watercolors afterwards, you're not having to think about where the eyes are, having to estimate proportions. Everything like that is sorted before you even uh, get started. So... Basically, I have an application and you don't need to have an application. There's, there's tons of them actually on online if you search it um, or search for Artist Grid, you'll be able to find some online. Um, another thing you can do is get a normal photograph and just draw a grid over the top. So this one I'm using is a 4x5 grid. So we got uh, four columns and five rows. And uh, some people do use grids which have a very uh, high resolution, as in you know, might have like a 10 by 10 grid or uh, something where the squares are very, very small. Um, I tend not to use grids like that because one, I'm a bit lazy to draw in all the little squares, and two, um, it just takes a really long time to, to do that. I try to just get in uh, a real basic grid there to help guide my proportions but I do like to do some estimation by eye as well to sort of uh, make sure that I'm improving my drawing skills. So for this one I'm going to be using a 4x5 grid and um, the methodology is the same whether you're using a smaller grid like this or a larger grid. We're going to have to figure out how big the square is going to be. Now if we look at 4x5 I think we can probably go by a 4 centimeter by 4 centimeter grid. So 16 centimeters from here to here and then we've got 20 centimeters from here to here. So that will kind of cover almost the entire sheet. I don't want to go any further than that 16 centimeters because it will be too close to the uh, edge of the paper. So what I'm trying to do is estimate where I'm going to place the, um, the person and I think I'm going to go around about here, leave a bit of space with the top. Okay, and um, you know I'm I'm doing this very very uh, roughly now. If you want to get this in exactly, you kind of got to measure from the top the exact amount of centimeters. For example, um, if you want to go something like five centimeters here and uh, five centimeters in from here, you can then go in and connect those lines up um, and get in like a a straighter sort of grid. I'm not going to do that uh, really for this one. Okay, so what we'll do is just to kind of estimate here, here. Okay, so 4, 8, 12, 12, 16. Okay, so that's now got me in a sort of the four rows. We're going to do the same down the bottom, but what we need to do first is get the uh, 20 centimeters on the side in. So we'll have to go 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Okay, the other side as well. Just hold it this way so I can see what's going on. Maybe this way might be easier actually. Okay, now it will be slightly off because I'm not um, getting it in, uh, holding that ruler exactly straight, but uh, it, try to get it in as accurately as you can. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And, uh, of course, down the bottom here, I'm going to get in a little bit of uh, the rest of it, which is the, you know, again, 4, 8, 12, 16. So, we just need to connect up the lines now, here. Uh, uh, Okay. Go very light as well so then you don't have to do too much erasing later on because we're going to have to erase these lines, uh, obviously. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and just get these ones going across as well. The squares are not super perfect, but we'll deal with that. Okay, so there we go. We've got a four by five grid now. So for this one, what we're going to do is uh, probably the simplest part, which is the shape of uh, the head. And I think the most important thing is um, you're just making sure that uh, it all fits in within these boxes. Now, the, the way to do this is to just look at one of the boxes on the grid. So this one on the top left-hand corner, we know that her hair kind of comes in like this on the edge. So we'll estimate it about there. There's a bit of hair coming over like that. Um, over on this side, there's a bit of a curve and it just goes all the way across and exits out of that box up the top there like that. Um, you know, her forehead kind of starts roughly around here. And I do like to use a little cotton bud as well when I'm drawing. This does help to uh, smudge around some shadows if I need to later, just to get some softer kind of edges in. Okay, because at the moment I'm just using a, a pretty large pencil. Okay, and you can see her hair just sort of come up there, you know, the strands of her hair kind of come up around like this. Um, and it all just kind of curves across um, down like this. Okay, kind of like a darker section of her hair here. And um, this part of her forehead you can still see kind of lighter but there is a darker section of her hair that's just over this side, like that. We also got to keep in mind exactly where um, the hair kind of gets lighter and it's around about the mid section, almost the mid, mid left side of this box where it starts getting a bit lighter, so just around here. And this is also the part where it kind of cuts in, if we, if we kind of have a look and it goes and forms the side of her face. So I'm going to put in a very light indication of where that is, something like that. Okay, it can change later, but I'll keep it like that for now. And of course, this edge of her hair here comes out and um, really it's, it's quite, it forms a side of her face here as well, but we've got these larger sort of strands that just come across um, like that, get the top of her head here as well and um, estimate where it cuts through that box around right about here. So where where the lines of her hair, the hair kind of intersects with the box, we want to just estimate roughly where that is. This is about, say about a third of the way through and it just curves all the way across like that. Okay. And of course we can correct this later if it's a bit off. And Again, here, this one kind of cuts through the edge of the box. And then where does it cut through here? I'd say almost midway or a little bit more than midway. So um, there we go. Just start drawing this line over on that side like that. Okay. And then I'll start, of course, getting in a bit of this edge of her hair here. Okay. The edges of her hair are, are important, but um, what's more important is where it... Um, touches her face because that's going to form the boundaries um, of, her, of her actual face shape. So it's super important to make sure that we get a face shape uh, in correctly. But the hair, I think, is probably um, one of the most important parts as well. We've got to make sure it doesn't go out of the, the entire frame too. So you can see all like the, her hair just sort of coming in, there's different strands and, you know, you can get a bit bogged down with all this and I don't want to overwork it. It's just so that I can actually um, get most of the details in with watercolors later. So we know her hair comes out around there, a bit of the side like this. Okay, there we go. That's done, that edge of her hair here. Okay, we'll probably, you know, redo bits and pieces of it. Now, we can see that her chin actually cuts through this box about halfway, exactly halfway. It is perfect, this um, this section here. Normally, it doesn't line up so well, but I can put a chin right here, 
and it's kind of like a rounded off at the edges. And then I'm going to see where it kind of finishes off here. And I'd say it's roughly about a, maybe a quarter of the way through the box. So something around like here. Okay, that's a jawline. And it just uh, curves inside here, disappears into some of this darkness in the back. Okay, um, how undecided how accurate that is yet. We'll see how we go. And again, just going to mark this edge of that box there. And um, let's go ahead and do the, exactly the same thing. Just connect these two lines with a bit of a, a, a light curvature like that. In fact, it's probably slightly wider out, isn't it? So slightly wider out. So sometimes you need to alter and change things up. Um, side of her forehead here, kind of her cheekbone area, it doesn't really pop out all that much. So just something here and then we're going to connect her jaw, which comes up around here, and then goes directly kind of up like this. Okay. Um, her cheekbone does stick out a little bit, but not um, too much. Okay, and then we can just see here, obviously, her hair. Um, it's quite light, sort of just comes out from her forehead. So we now have the basics of her face and um, the jawline, everything like that. So I'm going to go in and put in the left side of her hair. So that's round about three quarters of the way through the page, uh, through this box, or just slightly left center. Okay. Like that. And um, we'll bring this down again. It curves around. Curves around a bit like this. Comes down. Um, you've got another strand of her hair coming out, then another one sort of going a bit to the left. So sometimes I like to get in a bit of detailing for the hair, but I try to leave a lot of it actually for the painting. Um, another thing we need to put in is, is her ear. So we've got a bit of her ear that comes out behind uh, her hair, like this. Curves a bit around like that. Just kind of connects onto the side of her head. And then it just disappears behind all this hair. Okay, there's a bit of darkness inside as well that I can indicate with the pencil, something like that. Okay. Um, pretty much all around the jawline, it's pretty dark. Hair comes, it cuts around like this, and then it gets quite dark underneath this section here like that. That then comes across here. Here, okay, and then we'll go with her neck starting around about here, and um, it comes out to the bottom of that grid around about here. So I'm always just kind of referencing where the you know where uh, features are in relation to where they cut through grids as a general guide. Okay, so that's part of a neck that's in. Right side of her neck, you can't really see that. However, we do have to put in perhaps where her hair finishes off. And I think I'll just do something like this for the time being. Keep it simple. And it just curves in and forms the edge of her face. Okay. Uh, bit of her neck here. Um... Now what I'll do is start working a little bit on her facial features now. So this eye, again, have a look into the grid and see, for example, where it kind of starts. Now, we know the, it's almost like the, um, the, the edge of her eye clips a bit of hair here, okay? But we can estimate it to start around about there just the edges of her eye, the corner. And it kind of, it's quite sharp in the corners if you look at it, it's quite sharp. So I'm kind of keep the, try to keep the, uh, keep in mind the shape of her eyes as well. Okay, so there we go. We've got a bit of that eye that cuts around like that. Okay, a bit of the corner of the eye here and uh, underneath the eye just here like that. Um, and of course, her eyelid on top here. 
probably something I need to emphasize more later. Um, her eyelids are very close to the top of her eye actually on this side. Um, I can put in a bit of the iris and um, do the pupil just quickly like that. I'll get in the other eye now. So again, let's mark out the corner. So having a look through corner of her eye, it's almost um, it's almost evenly spaced on this one here, like the the edge of it, kind of the edge of the corner, like around here. That side of her eye finishes about here. Okay, with a bit of space to that left hand side. Okay, then we can go around and just get the contour of her eye. So it goes up and goes down into like a, a sharper sort of edge here into the 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 corner of her eye just looks a little bit sharper down the bottom Let's close that off a little bit down the, the the bottom like this kind of like a yeah okay so we're getting there it sort of looks um, resembling her a little bit I'm just gonna go get in the eyelid okay and some of this will change um, as I kind of refine it and perhaps uh, and get a better gauge or estimation of where her features are um, it's likely that I may change things around slightly okay but I think that looks all right for the time being um, just get in her eye as well with this side something like this middle of her eye the pupil of course the edges of her eye and they're kind of a darkish blue color looks to be and some of her eyebrows we get in uh, just simply like this there the one on the left starts uh, roughly around here actually near her the iris curves around the corner like that Okay, just a little bit of bit of detailing. Okay, um, her nose will just get in a bit more detail. Now this is where the um, cotton bud comes in handy because I can get in some small smudges around here to indicate uh, the bridge of her nose slightly in here, in here. Okay. Um, there are some sharp edges on her nose and they kind of um, come out like around here and, and the way I sort of look at look at her nose and look at her eyes and the edge of her nose kind of like intersects just a little in inside um, of the corner of her eyes so something like this here um, and we know that this is a nostril here just get a bit of Darkness here, a bit of darkness around here quickly. There's an estimation. Um, this sort of bit of a nostril on the right hand side, not completely symmetrical. In fact, um, few people's faces are entirely symmetrical. Okay, so we got a bit of a nose in now. And the shadows. Um, look to be running to the left side of the face, very, very uh, subtle shadows to the left side of the face, but they are, they look to be more predominantly going towards that left. So there we go, just a bit of darkness underneath her nose and nostrils, like that. Um, and we can just get in a bit more, a uh, little bit more detail for her nostrils. Blend them a bit in, like that. Okay, 
getting there. Um, let's put in her lips now. So um, again, estimating where her lips are going to go. And around here, we know that they start Ooh, almost if we draw a line directly up, it almost looks like they hit her pupils. Um, almost hit her pupils. They line up with the pupils. Um, so I can just put a, line, a little dot here, and potentially a little dot here on this side as well. Okay. And... Um, this is where I can just get in that middle part of the, uh, the parting of the lips. Like this. Which is the general line of the parting of the lips. Okay. There we go. Um, basic. And what I like to do here is uh, just use the cotton bud to kind of mark out the rest of the lips. Just create more of a soft feeling on the lips. Um, lips do have uh, more soft edges on them and people try to draw in the edges of them all the time, but often you don't need to even do that. You just need a little bit of color in there and that's it. Um, underneath the lip there is a little shadow, kind of like uh, here, very, very slightly. So I can just add in a bit of darkness like that. Okay. Um, but for the features of her, her face, they are basically almost uh, all in. I'm just going to go get in a bit of her shirt here that cuts across into this grid here. Um, and this one goes all the way down. Um, much to the middle of that one, like that, and uh, the, her, sh her shoulder here as well, just sort of connecting up to the top there, um, and a bit of this side of her shoulder as well, and the shirt kind of coming down, like there, and her... Again, just the part of her shirt where it touches the skin, just around here. Okay. So that's about it. Um, I'll tidy everything up. You know, I like to add in just a little bit more um, darker edges on some parts of her nose, perhaps um, tidy a few things up. But as you can see, um, there's a decent amount of accuracy there already. We can even start painting. We don't need to do all that much else. And uh, all we have to do is just erase these lines and we are ready to go.